Hey, founders, have you ever struggled to find the right market niche for your startup idea? I sure have. A dozen years ago, I was running a venture funded gaming startup, having that sinking feeling in the pit of your stomach where you realize I've chosen the wrong market niche. So today I'm going to share three tips for finding the right market niche from entrepreneurs turned investors, Gary Tan, Charles Hudson, and James Courier. I wish I'd had these smart people whispering in my ear when I was a first time CEO. It would have saved me a world of pain. And today I'm thrilled to bring their advice to you. Here are three hot tips from top investors to help you identify a market niche where your company can thrive. Make sure to stay to the end for a bonus tip that'll supercharge your success no matter what niche you're in. Tip one. If they say you're crazy, you might just be early. Innovation is all about seeing around corners and into the future. It starts with a hunch, something you think might be possible. Charles Hudson has seen this dynamic play out often, and he's got great advice for how and why to ignore the naysayers when you're figuring out your market niche. If people are making fun of you, you're probably doing something right. In almost all of these waves that I've been a part of, there was a long period of time where people thought it was silly or a fad or it wouldn't work or they didn't understand it. And I think what I've learned is two things happen when you jump on a wave early. First of all, you know infinitely more than anybody else from the outside because from the outside, you can't really tell what's happening when it's early. And second, that community of people that you meet in the early days oftentimes ends up becoming the experts in five years. And in every case, I can remember feeling the moment where like, okay, this is no longer the front end of the wave. People don't think this is crazy or weird anymore. And that's usually when I start thinking about well, what comes next. Tip two, look to adjacent markets for ideas and inspiration. Sometimes the best inspiration comes from cross-fertilization. Gary Tan ran into this when he funded Instacart. I met them when Apoorva was really working on it basically alone, and he had hired two people off of Craigslist to be his first drivers. The secret knowledge there, I think, was actually from an adjacent base. Uber was brand new. Because that was happening over here, Apoorva realized we can take this asset light approach and apply it to grocery. You know, we can hire people to basically do the driving we can build demand and you know it's a pure marketplace just like uber or lyft and so that's sort of what it took like this secret hypothesis that if right turns out to be now a 17 billion dollar or more business tip three harness the power of network effects james courier has built his career around studying and implementing network effects so many massively successful businesses like amazon Google, Netflix, Facebook, Roblox are all powered by network effects. Listen to his simple, clear explanation. It'll help you understand and harness this powerful tool and recognize network effects when you see it. So a network effect in my mind, very simply, is that every new user of your product makes the product better for all the other users. Does user number two, make it better for user number one? Does user number 1,000 make it better for user number one? When you look at exit values, you know as an investor that the network effect businesses are going to have such much higher values, like a GitHub, you know, 7 billion or something for a social network of engineers, right? I mean, amazing, right? It's because it's unreplicable. Like you can't ever build that again. That's now what the engineers are on. So you're done. I hope you'll use these tips to make smarter choices and accelerate your success. And since you stuck around to the end, here's your bonus tip for finding a market niche. Be original. You need to tap into your creativity and solve a real problem in a new way. Copying what someone did in the past and giving it a slight twist just won't cut it. The misconception I think people have is that they want success and then they look for stories that have happened to follow. And that makes sense because in school and growing up, we are taught to look for examples in history and then mimic those things. Hardest part about creation is not to find things that worked in the past and do those things again. You know, what is something that it sounds like what worked in the past, but nobody else has figured out X yet. Now I want to hear from you. 
Which tip resonated with you the most? Tell me in the comments and you might just get a shout out in our next video. If you want more innovation tips tailored for your specific situation, take our free quiz at gamethinking.io slash quiz. I'll see you in the next video.